Hello and welcome and I hope you're doing a good. I'm just gonna sit in front of this annoying light that's in my mirror. Um, we're gonna take a thumbnail because I have books in this video. I know. Who are we? Cool. So today, Today I'm gonna uh, talk about my top 10 books of 2020. It's currently the 9th of December, so um, this could not be complete, so to speak, or like it could change, but I don't think it will. Um, it might though. I'm currently reading The Testaments. I don't think The Testaments is gonna be up there off my top 10. I'm also going, hopefully, to be reading both Dearly, which is Margaret Atwood's poem collection, which definitely could be um, one of my favorites. I also want to read My Dark Vanessa, though I'm not sure I'm going to actually get to it this year, but I also think that could be one of them. What else? Um, Call Down the Hawk could also very well be on this, but I'm not sure I'll get to that. Um, so all in all, this is just like a a preliminary um well this is just the video that I'm making and I'm just saying that I ended this like in the middle of December so I might still have a few things that I really enjoyed um but that being said I have to film this video at some point and now is the only time I have the time to do so so here we go we're gonna start from like 10 and work our way up and then I'll also give some um, honorable mentions and I think I'll start with those um so the first honorable mention I have is American Psycho by Brett Easton Ellis um this if you don't know is about a man named Patrick Bateman who works on Wall Street and what he does like he's a very unreliable narrator and you basically like there's not really like you follow him as he grows more and more like psychotic I suppose is the right word to use and um you're kind of left thinking if he really did all these things because he is so unreliable but that being said one of the reasons why I can't put it as my favorites is because I genuinely think this was one of the most disgusting books I've ever read it is genuinely so uncomfortable to read which I think I, I don't know if I'll ever pick this up again and read it again, but it is a very good book. It's a tentative recommendation, 100%. Like, you need to know what you are in for when you go into this book. Um, if you look at this, I write the content warnings in the beginning of every book I read, and this is the list for that. Um, it takes up almost an entire page. Um and they're quite violent and quite big so I would tentatively recommend this I guess but definitely know what you're going into do some research all the content warnings are on my Goodreads review so I will link all of that in the description below as well as also just mentioning the content warnings in the description but um it is terrifyingly disgusting um but it's very good nonetheless so it's kind of a kind of a double-edged sword I suppose um can't be I, I don't think I can put it as my favorite if I'm honest um also I think if a man tells you that this is his favorite book I think you should run so okay my next what is going on Anyway, my next honorable mention is The Crucible by Arthur Miller. I read this for one of my classes. Um, I really like plays, like reading them when they're like this. I don't tend to enjoy Shakespeare and stuff, but like modern plays I really enjoy. And The Crucible was such a surprise, like a welcome surprise. I thought it was good. I liked the analysis that we made of it. I don't think it could be my favorite just based on the fact that I didn't necessarily think it was like perfect but this is definitely one of like a really good book or a really good play and I definitely think that um it's worth it and I would love to read some more of Arthur Miller's stuff 
if you don't know what the crucible is about it's about the 1692 salem witch hunt um in which everyone kind of um like women turn on women and a lot of people are being wrongfully accused um this was written in the 1950s though which is why it's really interesting um there's a really interesting aspect of it that like relates to mccarthyism and the like hunt on communists at the time in the states um hence why this was so controversial so i definitely give it a go um it does start out kind of boring i would say and then it just picks up and it's really good um i would like to see a production of it one day when i'm allowed to go outside again and next we have i think yeah we next we have my only non-fiction book on this list i haven't read a lot of non-fiction this year i genuinely think this is the only one i just sneeze. um i genuinely think this is my only i genuinely think this is my only non-fiction book this year um which is a shame to an extent but it's fine um and it's the motorcycle diaries by ernesto che Guevara. this is he this is god this is ernesto's diaries um as he embarks on a trip on a motorcycle funnily enough uh throughout south america with his good friend and um it's basically him like um figuring out how important people are and how helpful people are and how if you help each other you'll get quite far and i think that he meets um who does he meet at the end maybe she just shouldn't say it fidel castro i think is what who he meets at the end but i'm not sure um very good would definitely recommend it it's a fun read it's fun I, it almost made me want to um go through south america but i obviously can't right now uh on a motorcycle so and lastly my fourth and final honorable mention is a doll's house by henrik ibsen i've loved a doll's house for a very long time we read this in school because it is originally written in danish but reading it again at like a university level was just ugh. I forgot how much I loved it um, because I think it was kind of ruined for me from having to do like high school analysis of it um, but university analysis of it only enhanced it I really really love this I definitely would um, recommend this more than anything um, again it's a play if you don't know what it's about it is about a family in is it in Copenhagen maybe not it is about a family in which the wife is sort of infantilized and then um and a husband who tends to infantilize her and then like it's like a study of a marriage i think if you enjoyed marriage story which i haven't seen yet but i have a feeling if you enjoyed marriage story you might also um enjoy this uh which is a weird comparison to make to a film that i haven't seen but um this was like the main the main character nora is flawed and awful but she's amazing and i would recommend it out of my ass every day that didn't make sense just recommend it i would recommend it a lot please read it all right and here we go now it goes to the top 10 i know it's thrilling so top 10 books of 2020 number 10 is if not winter by ann carson um well edited by ann carson and translated and it's fragments of sappho's um like lyrics or um poetry and one of the pages has the greek uh version and one of them has a translated english version so i can still read it which is neat for me um I love this. I will come back to this so many times. Sappho has such a like lyrical um like she wrote songs is the point and she has such a lyrical way of talking about things and it like you feel transformed to another's time while still 
it's applicable to now and it's just it's so beautiful and raw and I loved it and I love it so much and I love Sappho's poetry and I think that this edition is really cool and it's like really nice and floppy um in the best way and just this one is really good so give it a go okay so next we have next on the list at number nine we have fahrenheit 451 by ray bradbury which is a classic obviously and i only read it this year um Ooh, I didn't do the disclaimer. Mm, okay, disclaimer, these are all books that I read in 2020, not books that came out in 2020. So, um, anyway, I read right back Bradbury, finally, Fahrenheit 451. My roommates would not stop talking about this, so I picked it up and I read it and I loved it. Um, this is about a man named Guy who lives in a world where he is a firefighter, but being a firefighter in this world means that you burn banned books and it is like his journey of like starting to question that and starting to um maybe understand that we don't necessarily need to burn books and that books are actually really important um for critical thinking and for the way that we live our lives and um it is a bit like the reason why it's not higher on the list I think is because it's quite male it's very very male um so um but it's very good it says some really important things and i think if you listened you'd learn something okay next number eight we have the song of achilles by madeline miller this is a retelling of the story of achilles and patrocles um in which the two are in love here um which granted they also were in the odyssey but what am I to say? Um, maybe in the Iliad instead. Oh, I don't know. I didn't. I didn't follow my classic studies. Um, nonetheless, Song of Achilles is a beautiful piece of art. Um, this edition as well is so stunning with the spine and the lovely textured cover and stuff. But it's about Achilles and Patrocles falling in love and subsequently going to the Trojan War. Um, and you, the thing is, you know what's going to happen because you know about the myth. But the build up to it in the way that it hurts even more than it was supposed, like, than you expected it to because you expected it to happen. Because Madeline Miller just constructed this incredibly amazing relationship between these two people and just wrote it in the most lyrical and poetic way while it still read completely as a no like a novel that you could easily understand going into it i was kind of wary because i was kind of concerned that it would be written like in an old timey way but this is written perfectly it's a perfect retelling i don't even know what to say um it's absolutely amazing go read song of achilles um i will again very very soon so Okay, number seven, I don't have a physical copy of because I got um, uh, like an e-arc off it on NetGalley, which I was really excited about, which is You Exist Too Much by Sina Arafat, which is about an unnamed protagonist who is Palestinian, I want to say. I think that's true. Palestinian and a Palestinian American um, who is dealing with her childhood which was filled with abuse and uh other sorts of different difficult topics as well as being gay in a um or like at least attract while also being attracted to women in a culture where that's not really allowed and also battling with an like battling with an addiction to love and a, like in a very unhealthy way obviously um and it's such a beautiful exploration of of like relationships to different people and how like addiction works in different kinds of ways and it was just it was so beautiful and I didn't see a lot of people talking about this book but it was one of my most um like anticipated releases and it did not disappoint absolutely would recommend it so much it's so 
emotional and you get so attached to this character even though you even don't know their name and like it's beautiful it's absolutely beautiful um and i really love the flawed main character because she's kind of a dick you know but you really learn to understand why but you still don't condemn or like but you still condemn that she's a dick obviously so it's like it's really well made i definitely would recommend it so go read you exist too much next up we have cemetery boys by aiden thomas this is one of my only hardback uh books and i hate like dust covers but i also don't like that when i show it it's just this but anyway it's cemetery boys by aiden thomas um this is about a transgender um protagonist called yatriel who is trying to prove himself to his um family and who who don't believe he belongs in the world that they are a part of which is i think they're called brujo but i might be wrong because i don't speak spanish but um they are sort of like witches or like they um not witches which is a is not the way to talk about it but they are spiritual and they help um spirits cross over to the um spirit world and it was so interesting first of all to learn about all these um latin american beliefs because i'm not american so i don't have a lot of um like i don't have a lot of contact with that sort of thing it was also absolutely incredible to see the way transness was dealt hmm, the way transness was dealt with in this book because it it does come from a trans author so it was very clearly very very well constructed and very well like very carefully dealt with in a way that's absolutely amazing i love the the romance which was so cute um this is a ya book so it is um simple so to speak but it is so it is so worth a read and it reads oh this is gonna last forever it really is it's gonna last forever i'm calling it now so all right next oh god we're going through so many of them number five is also a book that i do own a physical copy of but i left it in denmark and it is clap on your land by elizabeth acabedo and she writes in verse so it is in this sort of like like a poet poem and it is about two girls who lose their father but don't know that each other exist um so this man had a daughter in the dominican republic and a daughter in new york and it's about how families deal with that sort of situation when they then find out that that's the case and it's about these two it's about grief it's about these two girls coming together becoming like family or at least getting to know each other and understanding that they knew two completely different people but it was the same dad um it's so beautiful um i don't even know what else to say about it i know that people tend to recommend the audiobook because elizabeth acavero is speaking it which i think would be so much more powerful than reading it as well so um a recommendation from someone else apparently <laughs> all right next up we have god i can't believe how many of these are from my that's not true anyway next up on space number three is lolita by vladimir Nabokov. i read this for again one of my classes and i was terrified of this i thought this would be awful and gross and it was gross but it was also very good let me tell you what it's about lolita is about humbert humbert who is testifying um to the court for him for a case for himself by telling the story of how he fell in love with lolita and how um and like trying to win sympathy um because lolita is a 12 year old girl at the time where they meet and this obviously brings forward a lot of discussions about um consent 
about what love is, can you really love someone who is your stepfather, um, all these sort of things. Um, and it does it so well because there is never a moment where you are doubting whether Nabokov isn't condoning this because he absolutely is not. He's very clearly not condoned in the book. Um, and I think this is expertly done, very well done. And this is the reason why I want to read My Dark Vanessa because it was sold to me as a new Lolita. And Lolita has stayed with me since I read it the first time and I want to read it again immediately. It is so good. And finally, not finally, number two on the list my second favorite book of the year is actually a reread i feel like i'm cheating it but i can't choose anything else the handmaid's tale by marco dadwood um i read this for the first time in 2018 and just in those two years my reading has changed so vastly the way i read things the way i look at things critically the way i annotate the way I understand things, the way I'm affected by things has changed so much, but what hasn't changed is the fact that I love this book, even though I read it completely different this time than I did last time. The Handmaid's Tale is one of the books that, well, The Handmaid's Tale is undoubtedly one of the best books ever written. It is funny, it is heartbreaking, it is absolutely amazing. And let me tell you what it's about. The Handmaid's Tale is about um, the Handmaids, we are in a, god, The Handmaid's Tale is about the Society of Gilead. Gilead is what was once North America, or the States mostly, um, no it's definitely the States. Gilead is what was once the States and has now been turned into sort of a religious cult, um, where people have handmaids, which are the fertile women in the society who will tr travel from family to family, of some very privileged people um, and give birth. These people have genuinely just been turned into like birth machines. So the only thing that these women are good for is birth. And um, they're treated like that as well. So both bad and really carefully. Um, and this tale is a specific handmaiden who um, talks about her experience as a handmaid, but also talks about who she was before she became a handmaid, which is something that they're not allowed to do. It's absolutely beautiful, absolutely one of my favorite books of all time, and I can't, can't recommend it enough. Like, if you have not read The Handmaid's Tale yet, do it. Don't watch the TV show, don't do that. Read this, at least first, because <sighs> Margaret Adwood just has a thing with words. She knows exactly what to say. Okay, and finally, a book that I don't have because I lent it to my best friend because I loved it so much and I thought she would too is Circe by Madeline Miller. Wow. Circe by Madeline Miller. I felt a little bit bad about putting two books of the same author on this list um but if I'm honest I don't regret it at all. Circe is <sighs> amazing and before I get into why I'm gonna tell you what it's about. Circe is about Circe who is the daughter of a god, who I don't remember who is, if I'm honest, but she's banished from, she's banished to an island, her own island, um, after she poisons and changes one of her cousins um, into like a sea monster. And she goes to this island and she lives on this island and it's about the visitors there it's about odysseus it's about so many things but mostly i think that madeline miller made an incredible incredible book about what it is like to be a female presenting person in this world i think that if you are not a pr female presenting person and you haven't been treated as one you won't get this fully like you will read it and you will probably or like you will hopefully think that it's good i hope you do but you won't get it you won't get it because this is just so intrinsically like it's just at the core of it i think 
it describes the experience of being um it describes the oh god at the core of it it describes the the feeling of being perceived as a woman in this society and i think that madeline miller did a bang on job she did amazing and on top of that the story in and of itself is beautiful and she writes again just like in song of achilles beautifully and it's a different tone because it's a different character but it's still madeline miller and she's doing so very well and yeah all right to wrap it up those were my top 10 books of 2020 i hope that you enjoyed this video and i would like to hear what you have to say about my books i would love to hear about what your favorite book of the year was and i will see you next week okay bye